Now that we have Object 279's UFO looking Piet mobiles on the battlefield, it is time to buff some of the older personal mission reward vehicles. For example, Object 260 and T55A. This is what Wargaming is thinking about doing and are testing out at the moment. Couple days ago, T55A and Object 260 went into the Super S server with new turrets, buffed armor, and some buffed characteristics. Let's have a look. These nuts! <laughs> <laughs> what is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to my channel thank you for joining with me once again we made it it is friday beautiful weekend ahead of us uh, hopefully my video is kind of an intro for your weekend uh, but as a little mini tradition over here if i have anything new to talk about anything exciting to talk about i am usually going to do it on fridays now my question to you is when was the last time or how often are you playing with those personal mission 1.0 reward vehicles like T55A or Object 260. Not too often, I reckon. Uh, me personally, for example, when I got my D28 uh, HDC, I played my first battle ever in it after around two years unlocking it. And I can kinda say the same about D55A. After I unlocked it, I got it, okay, it is in my garage now, and I didn't play with it after like two months unlocking it, when one of my friends wanted to take those uh, things out in the platoon. So I tested it out, we played a couple battles, and I haven't touched it ever since. So they are not super good, they are not, well, they are not super bad either, they are average, but you know average in this game means bad. If anything or something is not overpowered it is bad or if anything is not super good uh, you really do not want to play with it uh, for free <laughs> let's put it like that and the same goes to the object 260 it is not the worst vehicle in this game but it is not the best either and people are not playing with those two reward vehicles super often so wargaming decided to bring them back into the meta game uh, buffing their armoring because the more armor you have at the moment the better your vehicle is of course uh, they decided to of the mobility and, and gun handling a bit so let's have a look and uh, let's start with uh, d55a so here is the armor profile here is the new armor profile uh, let's have a look uh, commander hatch uh, was buffed from 149 as you can see before 149 up to 157 so this is not that uh, big of a buff or that drastical uh, still any tier 8 vehicle any tier 7 vehicle is able to penetrate your commander hatch quite easily so the standard usual commander hatch weak spot is still going to be present on the 55a now gunman was buffed from 200 millimeters to 240 millimeters of effective armor value i think those numbers are effective armor values uh, turret on the right side uh, from the vehicle from 245 to 301 where we have that little mini machine gun and where we have a viewport i believe this is a viewport on the left but on the right from us uh, from 242 to 288 and uh, turret sides uh, from the front from 276 to 354 millimeters thick so all in all this turret received quite a significant buff actually and as they said they wanted to make t55a's turret a bit closer to the soviet t54's turret after the hd upgrade and this is what they achieved actually so definitely it is a lot better vehicle in the hull down situations now in the hull down positions but now let's take a look at some of the buffed characteristics so d55a hit points still the same 1700 Hull armor uh, 180 and 45, turret 200, 160, 65. Engine power it received 170 extra horsepower engine, and uh, not bad, up to 750. Uh, turret rotation dispersion was buffed as well, so better accuracy while it is moving its uh, turret. The power to weight ratio was buffed by 4.53, not bad, up to 200, yeah, up to 20 horsepower per ton. Uh, really well. Coming. Accuracy stays the same, 0.33, it has really awesome uh, heat penetration, but in my eyes it has the same problem as the 54 has. I really do not like such a big gap between standard ammunition and uh, premium ammunition. You literally get 129 extra penetration, which is crazy. So this is why people stand so many premium rounds, so many heat rounds from this vehicle and from D54, because why should you struggle 
trying to penetrate something with your 201 millimeters of penetration when you have 330 it has more premium penetration than on some of the tier 10 vehicles with premium rounds so this is this is kind of crazy and uh, aiming time was also buffed uh, by 0.1 seconds uh, down to 2 seconds uh, reload time stays the same 7.38 seconds gun depression minus 5 degrees gun elevation accurate number 14.25 degrees but uh, this is how the new D55A is looking like. I really dig the mobility upgrade, I like the aiming time buff, and yeah, better turret helps out your survivability, uh, but working those hull down positions with your minus 5 degrees of contemplation sometimes can be a bit tricky. Anyway, this is buffed D55A on the super test at the moment, and keep in mind, everything is subject to change. Uh, next up, let's take a look at Bobject to see Object 260. As Wargaming said, the Object 260 will become tougher and meaner. They are going to buff its turret and gun handling a lot. Gun handling is actually going to be buffed uh, quite significantly. But first, uh, let's have a look at the turret and look at the gun mantle. Wow, it had kind of weak gun mantle in nowadays World of Tanks. It had super flat frontal gun mantle and the 250 plus millimeters of penetration was able to penetrate it easily. And this was actually uh, the most effective way to take out the 260s uh, from the battle. Uh, just aim at the gun mantle with their 250 plus millimeters of penetration and uh, you see them going down easily. Uh, but now it was buffed from 250. 50 to 350 extra 100 millimeters of armor in the front. Uh, next up, the roof of 260 was buffed a lot uh, from 199 millimeters of effective armor up to 341 millimeters of effective armor. And the only penetrable spot is on the right side of the turret that was also buffed uh, from 191 to 232 millimeters of effective armor. So this turret, uh, although it is a lot tougher, a lot meaner looking turret, but it is still not an IS-7 turret. That has no weak spots, almost no weak spots whatsoever. And, and I guess they left uh, that part on the right side just for tier 9 vehicles, maybe for some of the tier 8 vehicles as well, uh, to penetrate when it is hull down, when it is completely hull down. And Wargaming decided to leave the hull as it is at the moment, they didn't touch it. Uh, next up, let's take a look at some of the buffed characteristics. Uh, hit points uh, still the same, 2100 hit points. In my opinion, they should buff that one as well, up to the IS-7 level, for example, up to 2400 or, or 2300 at the least. The 2100 is really, really low in nowadays World of Tanks. Hull armor 150, 150, turret 350, 240, 100, not bad. Engine power 1200 horsepower engine. Hull speed, turret speed, 26, 28, uh, view range 400 meters, and the first thing that was buffed is your hull movement and rotation accuracy. So your gun bloom is not going to be as big, your aiming circle is not going to be as big while you are moving or, or while you are turning your hull. Top speed, 60, 15, 19.58 uh, power to weight ratio, not bad, penetration to 60, 330, uh, 440 alpha damage and now gun handling that was buffed a lot. Accuracy from 0 0.36 to 0 0.35, aiming time buffed from 2.5 seconds down to 2.2 seconds, reload time was buffed by half a second down to 11 seconds, uh, gun depression minus 5 degrees, gun elevation 15 degrees and uh, turret rotation accuracy was also buffed down to 0 0.06, not bad. And this is how 260 is going to look like if Wargaming is going through with all those changes. Let me know what you think about this one and about D55A as well. Yay or nay to D55A. Nice. Anyway, uh, for the end of the episode, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to share you a couple goals uh, that I didn't know existed. Feels like I have been living under a rock because I am going to share you a bunch of codes that give you one premium vehicle for seven days as a rental vehicle. But guys, keep in mind you can use only one code and it is for EU server only, as far as I know. 
Sorry, my fans, from any other server, I didn't come up with it, uh, Wargaming did, so blame Wargaming. But uh, for some odd reason, I really do not know how this news or how this event uh, slipped under my radar. I didn't know about it until yesterday, when one of the guys under my 400,000 credits profit episode has said, when I said I do not have so more SM myself, he added a little bonus code that gave me Somo SM as a premium rental vehicle for 7 days. And I thought, what the hell, it actually worked, I have Somo SM in my garage for 7 days. So I did some more digging and I found this reddit post, I am going to leave this link into the description as well for you to check, uh, check out, but seems like uh, people were able to take a survey to see what kind of premium tank fits with your playstyle and uh, they got offered those codes. I guess this is how it worked. But yeah, keep in mind guys, if you activate one of those codes, you cannot activate any other codes after that. So choose wisely which vehicle it is going to be. You want to play for 7 days for free. If you do not have any premium vehicles, this is extremely awesome way to grind some more credits. For seven days, together with the Halloween event, of course, you can you can uh, pick up many many credits. So thank you, beautiful people, in my comment section. I have the best community ever. If I am not keeping you up to date, you keep me up to date, and I love you for that. So, ladies and gents, this was my news episode today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed today's news episode as much you are going to enjoy your weekend. I thank you for tuning in. You have been awesome. Stay awesome. Stay sexy. Uh, stay sexy. Yes. Take care, and bye. I'm waving to you. Bye.